talked about it. Um, you know, he had the thumb, it was a thumb injury, right? A thumb injury in the summer. And, you know, Shelvin Mack looked really good. And so their plan from the start was, was let's send Javon to the hustle, um, let him get a lot of minutes there and get up to speed. And that's what they did. And I thought that was fine. But once he turned the corner, he was always putting up good, good, good numbers with the hustle. And I don't watch hustle games, but yeah. for people I talk to who do what they who I trust told me that he got better. Like it's, the stat, it's not that the stats got better, it's that he got better as a player. And once he sort of, you know, powered, leveled up or whatever at South Haven, in South Haven, at the same time, shoving back was starting to sort of taper off. I thought it was time. And the other thing was at some point they were going to need him. Even if even if Mike Conley and Shelvin Mack, you know, stayed your number one and number two point guards all season, they're not going to both play eighty two games. Yeah, like neither of them have missed this game yet, but they will. And so it seemed to me it made sense to like get get Chiffon Carter's feet wet before you had to throw him all the way in. They ended up just throwing him all the way in anyway in the second half in that game against Houston, and it was it was like an irrational exuberance kind of night because we've seen plenty of like big games in early on that like never duplicate like Wade Baldwin, the most famous example, like they got Bobby Jones, they signed to a 10 day who had like a triple double <laughs> or whatever. And so like, there's no guarantee Javon Carter's good, but I sort of believed a lot of what I saw because he, if he didn't get go out there and hit a bunch of shots, in fact, he didn't, he's one of five from three. Like it wasn't that he was supposed to be a great defender. He was a defensive player of the year in, in college. People said in South Haven he had the quickest hands people had ever seen defensively. Like he had all kinds of steals there, and he came out there and guarded Chris Paul and James Harden, and guarded them better than anybody the Grizzlies had. Both of them in that game. Um, he's strong. He's fast. Um, quick hands. Quick, more quick than fast. But he's strong. He's quick. Um, he's aggressive. He, he's got that mentality, and I, you know whether he can run a team as a point guard, that's like the big mystery. But as a guy who can really disrupt things defensively, like, he, you know, he, 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 if he's not in the rotation, like now, at least to, to see what he can do, I would, I would be surprised and disappointed. Yeah. Well, uh, maybe we'll, uh, the Grizzlies will run him out against Steph Curry, pick up, pick up Steph Curry, uh, full court, uh, on, on Monday night against the Warriors. Uh, Absolutely. <laughs> like that's not even a joke. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. Like get, m- get make Clay Thompson work. Steph Curry. Yeah. 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 Right. <laughs> it's going to be good. Well, Chris, Hey, thanks for your time. Uh, really appreciate it. You uh, hopping on, uh, tell people where they can, uh, find your stuff. Uh, yeah. David Bethian.com where's my, where my writing and, and our, our podcast we're doing thanks, every Chris. week is, you can find me on Twitter at, at Harrington NBA. Thanks for coming on and look forward to talking with you again soon sometime. All right. Thanks, Steve. All right. Thanks to Chris for coming on. I went on another podcast and said that I didn't think Jermichael Green should even be playing. And then Jermichael Green had his best like three or four game stretch of the year. And I thought I was wrong, but I don't know. Something about him in the lineup, uh, I, I feel like it, it, it doesn't help somehow. And also with Javon Carter, this is one game. One game, but after being really unimpressed with him in Summer League, the thing that happened in the game against the Rockets was he got away with all his little fouls that they called every one of in Summer League. Uh, in the actual NBA game, just his little scrapping, clawing. They didn't call any of them, and, and it led to a couple steals. So uh, hopefully that'll continue, and they won't get destroyed on a Monday night against the Warriors. All right, if you want to support the show, you can do that at patreon.com slash fastbreakbreakfast. Hang out with us on our Slack chat. If you're buying tickets, use our code fastbreakbreak at seatgeek.com to get $20 off that purchase. Use that code fastbreakbreak. You can follow us on Instagram, on Facebook, and on Twitter. All right, you guys are the best. Thanks for listening. And remember, breakfast is the most important thing. Yeah, never apologize for being G&G. Fair break break, man. You understand?